Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> Put the word Phalaenopsis in the title and you all come flocking. Put 2022 Project Orchids in the title and... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, two more Phalaenopsis from Hannah to repot. And can they stay down with you, Dad? Sort of till they get established and everything? Hmm. Can we see a pattern developing here? Oh, well, they've got room on the kitchen window sill. <laughs> Hopefully there won't be any more. Well, there's no more shows to go to, so I doubt if she'll get any more. These would be the two she got from Malvern, I suspect. Well, this is actually a species. Is Phalaenopsis equestris a species? Uh, I can't remember. Um, if it is, then the, uh, I was going to say the manufacturer, <laughs> oh, I'm tired. The actual person who sold it to her needs to get a grip, because if it is a species, it's a, it's a lowercase e, not a capital E. And this is a pyloric one, three lips. Um, it was in moss, and I said to Hannah, you know, that if that's come from a nursery, um, you need to go very, very careful with the watering. Um, just partially damp, don't get it wet, or you will lose the roots. Now, this moss isn't tightly packed. I think Hannah loosened it, you know, she sort of fiddled around with it and sort of got it loose. Um, so it's not, it's not that bad. The trouble is, it's now got a change of media, because it's going in bark, and it'll have to put up with it. Um, I can't be doing with looking after plants in moss. It's, it's too much fiddling around and, you know, care and everything, trying to keep the uh, just the right amount of moisture. Whereas with bark, I can chuck water all over it and it'll go straight down and out the bottom. And uh, we should be okay. Um, well, I've had worse roots on a Phalaenopsis, but it's not brilliant. But as I said, I've had worse. And there are some good ones to go down in the media. And there are some that need to come off. Like that one is that one's rotten from the base, so take that one off back of the base. Off you come. That one's rotten back to there, but prior to that, it's green. It's just really tips. See, that one's got a bad break there, but um, you often find. I mean, I've said before, these, what, we're, what I'm cutting off here is not actually roots. Technically, it's vellum and it's a spongy coating over the top of the roots. It's not an actual root. The root's that little stringy bit. This bit. That's the root there. But they don't last long without their covering because they just shrivel. Because, you know, obviously they dehydrate so fast. Um, that's why the protective coating is there. And the protective coating is what holds the moisture and the nutrients so that the root can help itself as and when it chooses, um, which is how they work. But, um, as I say, it's uh, when you get a break like that, because it's only a break and the bottom part of the root is still encased in its, um, you know, in the velamen, it can technically still function. Um, however, the break in the root is a good place to get infections and things. So, Right, well, as I said, I've had a lot worse than that that have survived. I need to look up whether this is actually a species or a, uh, what you call it. Primary cross springs to mind, but you know, you know me, I don't... I haven't grown Phalaenopsis to any extent, so, um, <laughs> and this one's called Phalaenopsis Happy Hour, apparently. <laughs> I wonder if that was just the, um, when they did the price reduction to sell them off at the end of the, the, end of the show. Um, right, so that's the one that's come out of moss. This one is in that um, fibrous stuff. It has a mass of roots, many of which are probably going to be stuck to the pot down the bottom there. And they're easing out. So this is this fibrous peat stuff and in the centre of this not only do we have a plug 
we've got a little plastic basket holding the plug. There won't be any live roots in there, I doubt. <laughs> Believe it or not, there were. <laughs> it was one or two. So this one has managed to hold on to its roots um, and is a very, very good root system. Very good. So this, uh, you know, as I said, there, there will be a little bit of a shock for this one, changing media, but not much. Because with a root system as, um, as extensive of, as this, there won't be a huge amount of bark. It will, you know, when I pop this up, it will be nearly all roots. There's not much to come off here at all. Most of this is just going to stay. Two. Two roots to trim. So that's a good root system. And we've got a new leaf on here. So this is in active growth, and that's always a bonus. Um, it's always a bonus when a plant phalaenopsis is in active growth and you repot it because it has a reason to push out the roots and to branch the roots where you've trimmed them. It's got the reason is it's growing and it would like to continue doing so. They do have dormant phases, you know, where there's nothing growing. They finish blooming, you know, there's no new roots, no new spikes, no new leaves. And, um, that's not necessarily the best time to repot because, like I said, that there would be no reason for the plant to um, push out new roots. Um, right, so we will... <laughs> a dinky little thing, you know. I don't think I've ever seen one like that before. But if you think, you know, when these are coming out of the flask, you know, and they've got a, 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 some of this stuff, spongy sort of stuff, um, you know, and they, they probably have this stuff specially shaped to match that in two halves, yeah? You know, and you just put two halves round the plant and in there, job done. So, you know, it's got some sense in it. Um, it had some good quality bark on the top. I don't think it was mixed in, I think it was on the top. Yeah, that's rock hard bark, that's good stuff. Um, right, so we will, um, the, the big one's going back in the pot it came out of, and um, as there's no sign of rot or anything like that, it's just going to get a wipe with my fingers, which will then need a wash, but there's no need to sterilise and clean that pot to any extent, and the little one I'm going to have to find a pot for. So uh, anyway, we'll get rid of this and um, I'll be back. Right then, I've got um, two different size bark, chunky bark. Big one's going in there, if I can get it to go in there. <laughs> All these roots are not only tangled round, they're actually stuck together, so they have to be maintained like that. And I've got a horrible feeling that the plant is going to stick out the top of the pot as a consequence. Um, Right, and then lots of wiggling because although a few air gaps don't actually matter, I don't want too many. I'll try and get the plant in the middle of the pot. It matters so much with Phalaenopsis because they're not, <laughs> not going to grow over the edge of the pot, are they? They're going to grow upwards. They grow away from the pot upwards, but they tend to grow away from it. So I've got big bark up to there which is where most of the roots are. Make sure they're down in amongst there. And then what I'm going to do is top it up with smaller bark um, because obviously pots like this in an indoor environment are going to dry from the top quickly. So by having smaller bark at the top, these little roots near the base of the plant and any new roots that are looking to come down into the uh, pot have got something that's holding moisture a little bit longer than the big chunky stuff would. And there's a little bit of a hollow under the base of the plant and that's never a bad thing. That's where you'll get your base hall rot. Right, now that was happy hour, wasn't it? <laughs> Allegedly. As I said, I think that's the name of the plant rather than the time of day. 
Right, so that's that one done. A good soak for that, absolute drain it, wash all that dirt and dust off the bark. Now this one is going to go in there, but it's going to go quite low down. Um, I don't want too much bark around this one. Right, so some chunky in the bottom. And then we'll put that in. And see if we can... Are you going to go in there? Well, let's put it this way. You are going to go in there. It wasn't really a question. <laughs> it's a statement. I'm just getting some of the dust off the leaves here while I'm... Oh, well, that's it. I tend to do that when I'm watering because, I, you know, I'm going to have wet hands and it's easy to just brush dust off with your fingers if they're wet. Now, again, I'm going to have chunky bark around the base of the plant. Notice how much deeper in the pot this one is. That's not because I want the plant deep in the pot, it's because I don't want a pot full of bark with such a small plant. And then we'll, again, we'll put some small around the top in case we get any new roots. And they'll have something to come into then. And also it will just hold the moisture around those uh, roots near the top of the plant. Right, too much there. There we go. When you've um, done a phalaenopsis, have a quick look. And the, the lowest leaf shouldn't be in the media. You can accept it on the media, but not in it. So I just found a hole under <laughs> Lifted up that leaf to show you and found a hole. No bark. <laughs> but yes, try, try not to bury the base of a leaf in the media. It's a place where rock can happen because water will be retained in that area. So go steady what you're up to. Right, that goes back in the bag, the big stuff. Yeah, that looks okay. And that's um, Equestrius Pyloric Three Lips. Yeah, I seem to remember her choose. Well, when she was choosing it, I think I was there actually, and we were discussing which one I would have chosen. She already, she looked through and decided which one she would have, you know, based on number of leaves, number of blooms, number of buds still to open, trying to see if they had roots and all that sort of stuff. She did that and then she said, Dad, which one would you choose? And in that case, we both came up with the same one. <laughs> with one of the other ones, we didn't. Right, so, yeah, another quick repot to Phalaenopsis. Now I've got to try and find room on the kitchen windowsill for these two. Um, no good trying to keep these out here now. This morning was it. The first cold morning, or what I would call a cold morning. I would say it was four or five degrees outside. Not far off a frost, but not quite cold enough for a frost. And out here, it was 14 degrees being maintained by the heater. And that's the first time the heater's come on for a very, very long time. Normally, there's enough heat off the dehumidifier with reasonable temperatures outside to not need the heater, but this morning we needed the heater. And I suspect we will again tonight on the grounds that um, it's gonna be cold tomorrow morning and then it's gonna warm up again. Temperatures coming and going at the moment, but um, you know, if I'm going to have an orchid collection, I've decided my minimum temperature is lower this year. Some plants will probably suffer as a consequence. Some will be fine. Um, some I don't know what they're going to do. And um, that's how it's got to be. Uh, um, and the, the downside is, as discussed in the 2022 Project Orchids, the final look, any of you that bothered to watch it, um, there is quite a major change in growing conditions due to this place not getting sun on the glass. Quite a difference, but if you want that discussed then you have to go and watch that video, I'm not doing it again. Okay, so there we go, another two Phalaenopsis. For somebody who doesn't grow Phalaenopsis, that windowsill is getting pretty crowded out there. Um, I did notice watering them this morning that one of Hannah's has actually got spikes starting, so... Uh, they're starting to show signs of, um, you know, improvement because they've 
they weren't in the best state when they came down here. There we go then, quick Phalaenopsis repot again. <laughs> See you next time.